The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. The people stood by watching Jesus on the cross, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In our collect this morning, we prayed, Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, King of kings and Lord of lords, and he shall reign forever, forever and ever. I really cannot hear that phrase without being reminded of the Hallelujah Chorus. It celebrates the resurrection, and wonderfully so. It is easy to proclaim Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, on Easter when we celebrate that he has overcome death and the grave, or on a feast day like today. It's harder to imagine singing joyfully at the foot of the cross on Good Friday. But on this Christ the King Sunday, that is the scene in our gospel. The crowds that day certainly were not singing hallelujah. They were watching Jesus to see what he would do. They were casting lots for his clothing. They were mocking him, taunting him, deriding and rebuking him. The only one who recognized his kingship was one of the criminals who was hanging there next to him. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. How did he know Jesus had a kingdom? The boldness of this petition from one who is dying next to Jesus is astonishing. A reaction that makes more sense is the other criminal who says, if you're the Messiah, save yourself and us. This is what we want, right? We want to be saved. The crowds who welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem the week before cried, Hosanna, which means save us. So it's no wonder that the crowds have scattered, hidden, or are part of this crowd now mocking Jesus, who seems to be powerless. Indeed, not the king of anything. But if we sing hallelujah at all, we need to sing it, especially at the foot of the cross. Not in celebration of violence and death, but as an act of holy resistance to violence and death. This morning, I read of another shooting at a nightclub in Colorado and I think that on Christ the King Sunday, it is so important for us to remember that the cross 
points us beyond violence and death to the way of life. The powers of this world may seem to have the last word, and their power is founded on convincing us that they do. But we know they do not. They do not endure forever, and they cannot defeat the one power that does, the power of eternal love. Christ the King Sunday is a relatively new feast. Pope Pius XI established it in 1925 to counter what he saw as the destructive forces of the modern world, secularism in the West and the rise of totalitarian ideologies, communism and fascism. This day was established to claim that Christ, not any political ideology, is the focal point of the desires of history and civilization, the joy of all hearts and the fulfillment of all hopes. We need that reminder and that assurance today as much as at any point in history. Humanity is divided and enslaved by sin, as we said in our collect. God's will is to restore all things through Christ to free us and bring us together under God's gracious rule with Christ as our monarch. So just what kind of sovereign is Jesus? One who will not kill to save himself. One who does, does not claim the title king. One who bows before his friends and washes their feet. One who serves even the one who will betray him. One who says, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. One who tells the thief, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. One who taught us to pray that it would be on earth as it is in heaven. And one who showed us what that looks like. A few years ago, my husband and I visited Egmort, a fortified city in the Camargue in southern France. A couple of noteworthy things happened there. In the 13th century, this was the spot where the 7th and 8th Crusades were launched, led by Louis IX. We stood in the church where the Crusaders took up the cross of Christ. Then in the 17th and 18th centuries, the tower was turned into a prison for Protestants when they were being persecuted by the Catholic Church. One woman, Marie Durand, was held for 38 years and carved the word resist into the wall. Taking up the, Christ, the cross of Christ and sailing to distant lands to kill people who don't believe what you do? is not something Jesus would do or condone. Persecuting others who do not profess their faith exactly the same way you do is not something Jesus would do or condone. The kingdoms of this world, yes, even those who profess Jesus as Lord, love to sing hallelujah in victory, but have forgotten what Christ's victory looks like and how it is won. Jesus is not a sovereign who will lead us into battle, despite all those hymns we know. To put on the whole armor of God, the Apostle Paul tells the Ephesians, is to belt your waist with truth, put on the breastplate of righteousness, and lace up your sandals in preparation for the gospel of peace. It is to take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. We pray so we can remember the goal of Christ's reign, the restoration of all things. Our armor is defensive. It protects us and strengthens us to resist evil. 
It gives us eyes to see Christ's victory, even when the world wants us to see defeat. It gives us the boldness of the thief on the cross so that we can say, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. We proclaim Christ is sovereign even when he is hanging on the cross. Maybe especially when he is hanging on the cross. Because it is there that we see clearly where the sin of this world leads. To death and destruction. We do not want to go back there. We do not want our sovereign crucified over and over again. And that is why it is so important to understand what we are affirming when we say Jesus is Lord. We are affirming that Jesus' way is the way of life, the way of freedom, the way of unity, the way to the restoration of all things. Following Jesus means that we too are people who will not kill to save ourselves. People who do not claim sovereignty over others. People who bow before our friends and wash their feet. People who serve even those who may betray us. People who say, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing. We're people who know that today we are with Jesus in paradise. We are people who pray and act that it will be on earth as it is in heaven. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah.